Good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this uh, uh, webinar, Australian and Italian space industries and their roles in the COVID economic recovery. We are really glad for all, for all uh, the guests uh, that uh, you will see in a moment. Uh, we want to remind that uh, working with Australia, we would like to begin acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which they meet today and we pay our respect to elders past, present, and emerging. It is going to be a very dense session organized in two different moments. We will have institutional speeches and speeches from the local representative of industries. We will have a panel then with industry, academia and research entities. We reminded, remind the journalists that they will be able to write their questions at the end of the first part and then at the end of the second. I leave the floor to Cavalier Vito Pertosa, who is the founder of the Angel Group and the president of the Angel Group for a welcome address. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm happy to welcome all those who are online and especially the kind speakers participating in this workshop. Australia is a favorite nation for the Angel Group for us. In fact, we have two offices, one in Sydney for the railway sector and one in Adelaide, where we follow the aerospace sector and which was visited by the Prime Minister of of South Australia, who honors his presence today, and that we, he also come to visit uh, us at our headquarters in Mola di Bari. I take this opportunity to invite the kind speakers to the inauguration of the expansion of this site, which will take place within the summer and uh, which we will have all the information. Now I give the floor to my daughter Chiara, who closely follows Sitar as president. Good morning. Good morning to Paul. Thanks to uh, all Australian and Italian authorities. Thanks to uh, our customer, the Italian Space Agency and uh, the Australian Space Agency, well represented here by their president, Giorgio Saccoccia and Enrico Palermo. Thanks to uh, the uh, Italian authorities represented by uh, De Leverano. Uh, thanks to also to uh, 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 Stephen Marshall, Premier of the South Australia. Nice to meet you all. As President of CETAIL, I think this is a chance to put around the table once again Italy and Australia to develop cooperation in space business, research, projects and return on the investment in Australia. Angel Group is keen on starting finally a first project in Australia. And the message I would like to give here 
is that CITEL would like to grow its business in Australia, not only in terms of project, but in terms of uh, employment. We would like to increase the employment in Australia and investing also, if there is the possibility, in a new facility. We look forward to take this uh, opportunity uh, very much. Thanks to all, this is uh, uh, my uh, wish, uh, is that we can start to grow here in Australia. And uh, uh, thanks for your time. I give the floor to uh, Francesca Taglioli, ambassador of Italy to Australia. Grazie, thank you very much. Good morning to those who are following this webinar from Italy and good evening or good afternoon to those who are here in Australia. Distinguished authorities, distinguished participants, I'm really very pleased to, to open uh, this workshop on Australian and Italian space industries and their roles uh, in the COVID uh, economic recovery. Uh, space economy is an increasingly important sector in the world economy. We know that it's not, not a secret. The space industry, both upstream and, and downstream, plays a, a key role in functioning the functioning of our society. And, um, and this is thanks to the irreplaceable use of satellite technologies in navigation, communications, and in a wide range of services uh, for Earth observation. Uh, the space industry worldwide is growing at an unprecedented path and it is, it is expected to become worth of more than one trillion dollars by 2040, even after the disruptive effects of the COVID pandemic. The, I'm, I'm, I'm quoting data figures from Morgan and Stanley, so public uh, official um, uh, data. The pandemic certainly has been interfering with the ongoing development of the space industry impacting on the development of several projects and missions, but on the other hand, it has in a way further highlighted the big and still unexploited potential of satellite services, including for space exploration and defense and of the whole space ecosystem. One of the effects of the pandemic has also been that, you know, in a way shortening the distances, showing that up to a certain level working together is possible also by remote, as this webinar demonstrates. The world is leaving an, a new industrial revolution, which of course did not start be, um, with the pandemic, it started well before, but the pandemic has brought it to light has shown how critically important new technologies are in every possible field. And space has a big part in this, as an indispensable enabler. Italy and Australia share many common interests in the space industries, have a lot of complementarity, and most importantly, are two like-minded countries. What does this mean? Let's spend two minutes on this. It means that Italy and Australia do share the same principles and values, that Italy and Australia do promote the rule-based order, that we sit together in the same group in all international fora, and therefore we do trust each other. And this is why we can work together and we should do it even more. And I'm confident we will. The Italian space industry is one of the few in the world to cover the whole space supply chain. It includes large system integrators, about 200 small uh, and medium sized space companies, uh, a rising number of startups uh, able to innovate and stay ahead of new technologies and trends. 12 technologies technology clusters, one national cluster, and three national airspace associations. In the field of higher education, Italy has seven faculties of aerospace engineering, with four of them in the top 50 worldwide, not to mention faculties of other uh, branches of engineering and research institutions that focuses on sectors related to aerospace such as artificial intelligence, robotics, communications, health observation, etc. 
Italy is also the third major contribution to the European Space Agency. And thanks to its historic uh, uh, close collaboration with NASA, our country had a major role in building uh, and entering into service of the International Space Station. We are proud of all our seven astronauts, including uh, Samantha Cristoforetti, who for her second time in spring 2022 will travel to the International Space uh, Station and this time as commander, the first European female astronaut to assume the role of commander of the station. Australia's space sector is rapidly growing with a strong determination to achieve uh, the goal of tripling the sector's contribution to the to GDP to $12 billion uh, and creating an additional 20,000 jobs by 2030. Um, the Italian Space Association Agency, sorry, and the Australian Space Agency have already signed a memorandum of understanding to facilitate the cooperation between the two countries. And I take the opportunity to greet uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. Sakocha, whom I met and accompanied during his, uh, his mission last year. Some Italian companies, uh, and I quote them in alphabetical order, so uh, Igeos, Leonardo, Mermex, Sita, who are both part of Angel Group, uh, Tivac and others, are already working with uh, Australian partners, and a fruitful cooperation is ongoing also with the academic uh, academia world. And uh, on this, we will know more about uh, uh, during the webinar. I believe uh, that there is still plenty of opportunities to improve bilateral partnership and cooperation in the space sector. And from our side, from my side here, I wish to, remember, to remind all of us that uh, um, space is a cooperation of the whole Italian system in Australia. This embassy, the consulate, we have five across Australia, the Italian trade agency, the Italian Chambers of Commerce, all in all in cooperation, of course, with the Italian Space Agency. And we are working together to accelerate the reciprocal knowledge and the interaction of the two ecosystems. During my visit to South Australia already in February 2020, and also more recently on the occasion of my state visit last November, and I want to thank again Premier Stephen Marshall for, for those visits. I had the opportunity to see the HQs of the Australian Space Agency at Lot 14 and really to understand and realize the extraordinary role that South Australia has been playing in the establishment and the growing of the Australian Space Agency. And since then, I have determined that Italy will be attending each of the future Australian Space Forum in Adelaide with the aim to promote bilateral opportunities in the space sectors and beyond. So soon in July, we have planned two webinars aimed at better informing the Italian space industry and academia on the Australian space ecosystem. And I wish to thank Professor Sassanelli and Dr. Andy Coronios for having accepted to be guest speaker also on those two. Uh, webinar in July. I'll stop here with my remarks. I think I've used all, all my time at my disposal. I thank you all for these initiatives. You can count on us, as I said before, and I really look forward to listen to all other distinguished speakers. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Ambassador Tardioli. I welcome and leave the floor to Her Excellency Margaret Tuomey, who is the ambassador of Australia to Italy. Thank you, moderator, Mr. Molina, and uh, um, good morning from Rome. Um, uh, there's such a distinguished group here. I don't think I'll go through the entire list, um, but just simply to say good morning to um, all very distinguished guests. Um, you've done a great job um, harnessing uh, the biggest and the brightest um, brains and uh, business in the space industry. And it's lovely to see such a balance um, between uh, Italian-based and Australia-based. Thank you also for the excellent um, time zone, like leaving me time to have my breakfast before um, I started this. Not always that way on a Monday morning in Rome when you're talking to Australia. Um, look, 
post-pandemic economic recovery is a very worthy theme, and I'll come to that in a moment. But from past experience, I know if Francesca Tardioli speaks before me, she usually um, says all the same things I want to say, because naturally, as um, respective ambassadors, um, we have very similar perspectives, albeit looking from um, opposite, um, opposite prisms. So, look, I just wanted to say, first of all, um, that underpinning all the research and cooperation, um, including between Australia and Italy, uh, is a more fundamental driving force when it comes to um, space, and, and that's curiosity. So no doubt, like many of you, I'm guessing, uh, I don't know any of you well, but I'm just guessing many of you wanted to be an astronaut when you were young. Um, I certainly did, um, but in the end, uh, unfortunately, a career in diplomacy had to do. So here I am. But even diplomacy has um, had its rewards for me in terms of pursuing this um, interest I've had since childhood. Um, firstly, such as getting a bit closer to the space industry um, through this posting in, in Italy. Um, but also for me, um, from a posting I got to have in Russia, where I had the privilege of doing crazy, wonderful things like um, visiting Star City. I don't know if many of you have um, got to do that. Um, getting to wander through the fully fitted training replica of um, the Mir station. And uh, most of all, for me, um, getting to talk, very exciting, getting to talk to the famous cosmonauts uh, Valentina Tereshkova, first woman in space, and um, the now late um, Alexei Leonov, um, Yuri Gagarin's counterpart, who did um, the spacewalk. So to talk to them about um, their experiences as pioneers in space. I even think of diplomacy uh, when I marvel at the progress we are making, um, again, between Australia and Italy, in collaboration with Australia and Italy, in the development of the Square Kilometre Array. Um, the images of all those antenna in the deserts reminds me of, um, of the brilliant movie and book by Carl Sagan called Contact. Again, I don't know how many of you have seen it, but it's a very thoughtful um, piece of work. Alien and unintelligible signals um, are picked up by the very large array in New Mexico. And it's eventually realised that these are instructions on how to build a, a spacecraft um, that will presumably take the human traveller from Earth to the alien civilization who sent them the messages. So there's many, many fascinating, thoughtful storylines in this um, movie, but the one that's of most interest to me is uh, diplomacy. So who leads diplomacy on the part of the world um, when dealing with an alien civilization? I, I doubt I'll live long enough to um, find out the answer to that particular question. Um, but when I look at the innovative work um, between Australia and uh, Italy and other partners in space, this is where my mind, uh, the diplomat, diplomat's mind, ultimately takes me. And in addition to imagination, of course, we need technical know-how, uh, we need the finances. Uh, Australia and Italy have both of these. Uh, we also need structure for collaboration, and we now have that through the Australia-Italy Bilateral Science Treaty. Uh, as Francesca has said, we're two like-minded countries, and. Um, very importantly, uh, we trust each other. So one of the outcomes of our cooperation, of course, is the establishment of companies like CITIL and Leonardo at some um, subsidiary EGOs in South Australia. Other speakers, I think, will discuss um, such investment in more detail, um, but there are several aspects to the space relationship I'd like to just briefly mention. For example, in October 2020, Australia and Italy were two of the eight founding countries to sign the Artemis Accords uh, with the United States, paving the way for participation in NASA's plans to return to the moon and to travel to Mars. Pretty exciting stuff, I reckon. The Australian government's also committed 150 million towards Australian um, business and researchers to support NASA's moon to Mars exploration approach, including NASA's Artemis lunar program. And of course, uh, my favourite, the Square Kilometre Array, is the other major area where Italy and Australia are collaborating on a major international project. The aim is to unlock the secrets of the universe through a massive radio telescope built partly in South Africa and partly in Western Australia. 
And again, a fun part of my job was as we were lobbying when we were still, Australia was still in competition with South Africa to end up being the host of the square kilometre away, I got to wander through the Russian Academy of Science and, uh, and all affiliated um, space agencies in Russia to convince them as to why um, a square kilometre array in Australia would be a good thing and got to meet some amazing people and some amazing, some amazing minds. In February 2021, Italy joined Australia as one of the six founding members of the Square Kilometre Array Observatory. And in April 2021, our Prime Minister Morrison committed $387 million uh, in investment to build the Square Kilometre Array radio telescope in Western Australia's Murchison region. Our Prime Minister noted at the time that this investment highlights that science and advanced manufacturing are at the heart of the Australian government's national economic recovery plan from the COVID recession. An important part of the work is being done in Italy, especially the design and manufacture of the thousands of antennae. And this has also involved a significant exchange of uh, people and know-how as, as highlighted by your, um, your event today. I'm very proud that in the midst of such human and economic suffering, um, Australia and Italy are still both brave enough to think big, to literally look at the stars. Two dynamic countries, each able to draw an innovative and risk-taking business. I'm really sorry I can't uh, get to Australia easily at the moment to check out this particularly fascinating um, aspect of our cooperation and very much admire the visits that uh, Francesca has been able to make and will make and uh, tweets about. Uh, I do at least have the privilege of being in Italy for its G20 year, uh, including seeing the institutional support uh, for the science that is bringing the COVID pandemic under control and building back bigger and better. So I wish you the best for your program today. I look forward to learning more about how we can cooperate, uh, but also most importantly, what we can discover today. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador Tuome. And uh, I'm glad uh, to invite to the floor Enrico Palermo, who is uh, the head of the Australian Space Agency. Enrico, the floor is yours. Good evening, everyone. Buongiorno e buonasera a tutti. My name is Enrico Palermo, and I'm the head of the Australian Space Agency, talking from our headquarters here in Adelaide, South Australia. I'd like to also acknowledge uh, the traditional owners of the land in Australia I'm speaking from, the Ghana people, and pay my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. Uh, I also would acknowledge our esteemed, esteemed guests. I won't cover all of them, but in particular, uh, Your, Your Excellency, Ambassador Tadioli. My apologies, we couldn't connect last week, but I definitely share your views. We have like-minded countries and the potential of working together uh, and, and improving the strengths of collaboration uh, between our countries uh, are great. And, and we definitely would welcome you back to our headquarters now that the Australian Space Discovery uh, Centre is launched. Uh, Your Excell Excellency, Ambassador Tuomi, uh, definitely share your interest and, and passion uh, for the SKA and, and the opportunity that lies ahead of us. And then ASI President uh, Giorgio Sacoccia, it's uh, great to connect. And of course, uh, our Premier of South Australia, the Honourable Stephen Marshall, MP. It's a, it's a pleasure to speak with all of you today as part of the Italian and Australian Space Industry Workshop. I would uh, like to take this moment uh, to also acknowledge the 75th anniversary of uh, Italian National Day or La Festa della Repubblica, uh, celebrated last week uh, by our colleagues. So I'll take a few, moment, few moments to highlight the work taking place at the Australian Space Agency uh, through our space programs and, and priorities. Um, how that work has an important role in the economic recovery of Australia from the COVID-19 pandemic and talk briefly about uh, the ongoing collaborations and partnerships between uh, Australia and Italy and some of those have been uh, cited already. To begin, the Australian Space Agency purpose is to transform and grow a globally respected Australian space industry that lifts the broader economy inspires and improves the lives of all Australians. It's an ambitious goal, one that our team is behind and it's underpinned by strong national and international engagement. 
Um, our goal as the ambassador covered is to triple the size of the Australian space sector to $12 billion Australian and create an additional 20,000 jobs by 2030. And we, in 2019, published the Australian Civil Space Strategy that sets out the 10-year plan to ensure, to ensure Australia's space industry secures a significant share of the global space economy. So the role of space in Australia's COVID-19 economic recovery. Investing in space is about investing in our future and developing an emerging industry, which in turn grows our economy, creates new jobs, and I would submit solves uh, some of Australia's greatest challenges. The Space Agency in Australia wasn't on the front line in the early stages of the pandemic, as you would expect, but we knew we would play an important role in the recovery phase by supporting the industry as it emerges from initial economic impacts. The first thing we looked at was fee recovery and deferred fees of launches and returns to the space sector for 12 months. Secondly, we released the first tranche of investments uh, as early as we could in the pandemic through our industry programs. We knew it was important to continue building pathways for critical infrastructure and industry growth, which is why we announced three projects being supported through the Space Infrastructure Fund, and I'll cover those briefly. One was $6 million for the Australian, Australia's first mission control centre here in Adelaide. It was $4.5 million for the Australian Space Robotics Automation and AI Command Control Complex in Perth and $1.5 million for the Australian Space Data Analysis Facility, also in Perth. This was in addition to the already announced support to upgrade existing infrastructure in Tasmania to commercial standard for deal but tracking. To further support the industry and research community uh, through the pandemic, we also announced the first round of the International Space Initiative Fund, which supported 10 projects that ranged from passive radar detection of space debris with the likes of Salentium Defence, to innovative new spacesuits by human, human aerospace. And shortly I'll talk about a collaboration with Italy on the International Space Initiative Fund. So with the range of skills and capability exhibited in these projects and others in the pipeline, we believe the space industry will form an important part of the economic recovery of Australia and will help us emerge. And then emergence from the COVID crisis by leveraging space is clear to us. Uh, one, space technologies, we all know, have widespread application in our everyday lives to keep people connected remotely or ensure shipping and air freight navigate to the correct location safely. Secondly, the spillovers from space extend across other areas of the economy. For example, new remote medicine techniques can assist rural medicine in Australia. And third, space is an incredible tool which can help other Australian industries go. And I apologise, the lights are turning off in our um, uh, building here again, it's the evening. Um, key to our contributions to Australia's economic recovery is delivering on our civil space strategy, which provides a, a long-term framework around which to plan our activities towards the transformation and growth of the civil space industry. As you may know, we have seven priority areas that focus on where Australia has strengths, and can play a key role as a future global space leader. These include Earth's observation, access to base, communications and robotics and automation. And we're in the process of developing technical roadmaps for each of these areas that will develop aspirational capability targets. An important part of the recovery of the economy here in Australia is an initiative called the Australian Government's $1.5 billion modern manufacturing strategy, which is a major opportunity in 2021 that will further connect space and Australia's manufacturing sector, with space identified as one of the six national manufacturing priorities here. This strategy will support Australian manufacturers to scale up, to compete internationally and create more jobs in the process. As part of this strategy, a space manufacturing priority roadmap was developed to set a plan for industry and government to work together towards a common vision for manufacturing in the space sector. And that roadmap was launched in February this year. My final points cover collaboration between our great nations. The Australian Space Agency entered into a memorandum of understanding and signed a statement of intent with the Italian Space Agency to explore a joint project on the International Space Station. These agreements will enable us to explore future cooperative projects together in areas such as space technology, space policy, space weather and space education. One of our programs is the International Space Initiative, Investment Initiative that I mentioned earlier, 
that supports strategic space projects to build relationships with international space agencies like ARCI and grow Australia's space capability. One of the 10 projects uh, launched last year was awarding approximately $4 million funding to the University of Melbourne to build the small satellite called SPIRIT. The SPIRIT mission aims to grow Australian space industry capabilities through the development of an innovative nanosatellite. This project is a collaboration between many Australian space companies, including CITAEL of Australia and the, and the Italian Space Agency. It will be the first Australian-made spacecraft to host a foreign space agency payload with the Australian Italian Space Agency providing an X-ray detector for the mission. This project will demonstrate the viability of Australian products in the global supply chain of satellite components, showcasing the competitiveness of Australia's nanosatellite R&D and advanced manufacturing. And we look very much forward to the Spirit mission, mission launching in 2022. And I had the opportunity to connect with Professor Trenti and the Spirit Mission team about two weeks ago for a progress update. And it's very exciting to see how that collaboration is coming together and bringing together partners in our collective ecosystems. I'm also excited to hear this evening CITEL's intentions to grow their presence, activity and employee base here in Australia. So in closing, I thank you again for the opportunity to speak at this wonderful event this evening. The Australian Space Agency values its relationship with Australia and, and ASI on civil space matters, and we look forward to working with our Italian counterparts on shared missions to grow our national space ecosystems and improve the lives of people on Earth through space. Sono convinto che insieme troveremo le soluzioni alle grandi sfide. So thank you e grazie. Grazie. Thank you, President. Thank you very much. Uh, we are very glad to host uh, uh, the Premier of South Australia, Stephen Marshall, who is now connected uh, from uh, Innovor facilities. Please, uh, uh, Premier, the floor is yours. Thank you. Grazie tanto. Um, I too would like to begin by acknowledging that I'm broadcasting from the Ghana land, the traditional lands of the uh, Ghana people here in South Australia, and I acknowledge their ongoing spiritual relationship with this precious land. Buonasera a tutti. Grazie per questo invito. Sono felice di essere qui con voi stasera. Complimenti, signor Vito Petosa e Citael per questo molto importante conferenza. Mi piace l'italiano, ma non lo parlo bene, allora continuo in inglese. Um, good evening from South Australia. Good morning uh, over in Italy. It's absolutely fantastic to be able to join with you uh, in this very important uh, workshop, one that we feel very excited about here uh, in South Australia. I too would like to acknowledge their excellencies, Francesca Tardioli and Margaret Toomey, uh, who are on this workshop with so many other of our friends uh, in the space sector. I've got to tell you, I'm very excited uh, here in Adelaide. I'm on lot 14. I've just left uh, Parliament House. And so I was able to see the very first part of the uh, conference on my phone. So thank you for organising that. And I came straight here to lot 14 to be at Innovore uh, to join in uh, with this important workshop. We're very excited about the space opportunity. We have been for quite some time, especially with our friends in Italy. And in fact, uh, that relationship, that collaboration with Italy goes back to 2016 when we signed our memor mem memorandum of understanding uh, with the Italian Space uh, Agency. Uh, that was done in Rome and something that we feel uh, was very, very um, positive for us here uh, in South Australia. And of course, in 2017, we had the honour of hosting uh, the, uh, the very important international conference uh, here uh, in, uh, in Adelaide. And that was the time when our federal government announced that we would finally uh, in Australia have our own space agency. So that was very, very important announcement at the IAC uh, in Adelaide. And we've been working furiously since then to develop out and fill out the ecosystem uh, in our country ever since. Now, I feel very honoured because uh, the Prime Minister decided to put the headquarters for the Australian Space Agency in Adelaide in South Australia, uh, on Lot 14, where I'm broadcasting from uh, tonight. Not only do we have the headquarters here in South Australia, uh, we also have Mission Control and the Space Discovery Centre. Uh, we also, very importantly, have our friends uh, from CITAIL. Uh, and Mark Ramsey uh, is uh, here 
on lot 14. He does a great job. I've got to say, I very much enjoyed uh, meeting with Vito and his team uh, over in Bari uh, a couple of years ago. And I want to get back there as quickly as I possibly can. I think there are enormous opportunities between Sitale and, and what we're doing here uh, in South Australia. It's great uh, to have them here. And we also, of course, on Lot 14, have now welcomed Leonardo with their GEOS uh, program becoming part of the Smart Satellite Cooperative Research Centre. Now, this is also based uh, in Adelaide. It's the largest space-related research program in the history of Australia, and it incorporates a large number of uh, government uh, agencies, universities globally, uh, startups, international primes, all looking at how we extract as much value as we possibly can from this transformation which is going through at the moment as we move from a very small number of large satellites to a large number of very small satellites, the CubeSat, the NanoSat, uh, uh, the SmartSat, uh, which we're so fascinated by here. And moving towards these uh, smaller satellites, these nan nanosats operating in constellations uh, in low Earth orbit. This is an area of great focus for us uh, here in, in Australia and particularly here uh, in South Australia. Now, to that end, recently uh, I announced that we would uh, develop our own uh, uh, smart sat here in South Australia with two payloads, one with Earth observation uh, and another one with the Internet of Things. And that's being built on lot 14, right in the centre of our city by a fabulous South Australian company, Innovor. Uh, so if you haven't uh, if you haven't heard of Innovor before, get on, on board, uh, check them out. I'm broadcasting from their uh, office uh, on lot 14 at the moment. In fact, Innovor are currently building five satellites, one for us in South Australia, two, I think, for the CSIRO, a major research organisation in Australia, and two for the Department of Defence. But I'm really excited about the program uh, that we're putting uh, in place because we know that that's going to help develop out uh, that wonderful uh, ecosystem, if you like, uh, that we need to create here in uh, South Australia. Uh, and we're even getting our school students to become involved with uh, putting sensors uh, into uh, various uh, parts of the state so that we can uh, access data and get them educated about the great uh, transformational opportunities that data is going to provide going forward. And we've even asked the school students to help us name the satellite. So I'm looking forward to some very interesting names. What could possibly go wrong? Anyway, those names should be coming in uh, fairly soon. It was wonderful to have Her Excellency Francesca Tardioli here in Adelaide recently. In fact, she's a frequent flyer. She's a frequent visitor uh, to South Australia. We always love having her here. Uh, she and her team uh, do an incredible job and they're very excited about the opportunities uh, which, uh, are, which come from uh, space. So we're very excited about that. We're also excited about our federal government's agenda uh, to... Uh, grow very significantly the size of the Australian space uh, sector uh, to $12 billion by 2030 and creating another 20,000 jobs. And we unequivocally uh, would love to get uh, many of those jobs here in South Australia with our great uh, focus. Uh, and to that end, we've established our own uh, growth uh, sector plan for the space sector. We already have about 1,400 people employed in the sector in South Australia, about 80 uh, organisations in this sector. But this is growing virtually every week at the moment. We're also putting money uh, into uh, space uh, fora, which are held twice per year, bringing together uh, people from across the country, across the globe, to share ideas and experiences and ambition uh, for space going forward. I think the last two uh, for it had more than a thousand people attending and I think that just demonstrates how excited we are about space here. In fact, at the most recent one, which was held, uh, we had a feed coming from the International Space Station and, Station and Shannon Walker, uh, the wife of our own astronaut Andy Thomas, uh, was speaking and delighting the audiences. So very excited about the future uh, of space and what we can do, what we can play uh, here in South Australia. To that end, uh, we offer space scholarships each year for young, aspiring new entrants to the space sector 
to uh, spend time maybe with a global uh, prime to develop their expertise uh, and their experience. We're very genuinely wanting to make this a major focus for our strategy here in South Australia. So I'm very grateful that I was invited to attend this workshop. Um, it was an honour to visit Sitale uh, in, in Bari and to um, experience their ambition, their great expertise, uh, which we now have in South Australia. And we look forward to many projects that we'll be able to work on with them in the future. Just finally, I too would like to acknowledge uh, that last Wednesday, uh, we recognised the 75th anniversary of the Italian Republic. We had a big uh, uh, dinner uh, here to celebrate. I didn't need to eat for two days afterwards. There was so much fabulous food. So uh, congratulazioni for the uh, 70 uh, cinquesimo anniversario of the Festa della Repubblica. It was a very big night here uh, in South Australia with our, our consul Adriano Standardo and just about every person uh, from across the Italian community, a big day of celebration. So thank you very much for inviting me along today and I wish you all the very best for the workshop which will be uh, rolling out over the coming hours. Grazie tanto. Thank you very much, uh, Premier Marshall. Thank you also for acknowledging the Due Junior celebrations of last week. We are very glad uh, for, for this. And um, we, we come back to Italy now. We come back to Italy to our guests uh, uh, in the Italian morning. Uh, we will start from the regional perspective uh, uh, given by two districts, the one uh, of uh, Puglia and the one of uh, uh, Tuscany, that are two emerging aerospace districts, and it is where the geographical footprint of Sital is mainly located. So I leave the floor to Giuseppe Acerno, who is uh, the president of the Apulian Aerospace District. Giuseppe, please, the floor is yours. Good morning. Thank you for your kind invitation. And in this uh, short speech, I will start uh, mentioning uh, what the World Economic Forum say about uh, the Great Reset Initiative. It says that uh, nowadays there is, there is a necessity, a uh, need of a global cooperation between stakeholders that can uh, manage uh, the impact of the COVID on uh, our societies. And uh, in this scenario, I see the importance of this meeting. And uh, again, thank you for your kind invitation. As every meeting that in this period can reinforce the attempts and uh, the needs of cooperation between the humankind and between states, of course. We, in this scenario, we have uh, already seen uh, how space technology has uh, have, uh, helped our uh, way to address the, the COVID-19. And we have already seen how satellite communication, uh, earth observation, uh, positioning, all of it has given birth to uh, push on uh, different activities, telehealth, uh, telemedicine, remote working. Uh, so we can measure how space technology has already give help to communities and to space to face the COVID-19. And uh, I would say that uh, this is a period in which uh, the people that think out of the box that is able to create new pathways and solutions is what we need, because we are going to a radical change of our way of life, uh, maybe a change in the way in which we respond to our needs and uh, the way in which we will discover new needs. And uh, space uh, is typical. It is a typical ground in which uh, this approach uh, is day by day uh, applied by all the people that are involved in this, in this sector. Uh, but uh, it's important only, not only to say that uh, space will remain decisive in the future and in the way in which we will address the COVID-19. We have also to say that uh, many space sector fear firms seems to be able to cope with uh, COVID-19, but there are many of them that are already struggling for the difficulties that are belonging to the impact of the recession. And I would like to underline it because uh, it's important to remember how the, the, the bulk, how the, 
the core of uh, the small of the space sector is uh, um, uh, moreover uh, um, focalized on small and medium enterprises. In particular, in some countries, it happens in an extreme way, and so it's necessary. Uh, to pay attention uh, to the risk that uh, these small and medium enterprises uh, run. And uh, don't forget that this is a sector in which the, the, um, there are a, a lot of barrier uh, in order to enter in it, and uh, is a uh, high cost entry in this sector. So if we do not pay attention to preserve uh, our small and medium enterprises, uh, if we do not pay attention to preserve the, the value chain, Maybe it will be difficult in this next future to preserve this value. And we, we risk to see uh, concentration in, uh, in uh, not so many industries, and we will see, we risk to see concentration in few industries. Uh, so I think that uh, it's important nowadays that public administration, and not only them, also public agency, can pay attention on it. And they can interview how, I, I would say I, I, I would say that there is a list of requests that comes from all enterprising from all over the world involved in the space sector. We have read many surveys from the states, from Germany, uh, from Korea, from many states that underline the importance to simplify procedures, to uh, help small and medium enterprises to access to private and finance, private finance and public finance in a, in a, in an easy way and also to adapt uh, new eligible criteria for support and procurement programs. Uh, of course, uh, uh, COVID is not only a crisis, it is uh, also an opportunity. We can see how during the recession, how the recession in the last year has given birth to maybe most of the representative uh, enterprise uh, that uh, have, are changing uh, our uh, 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 the, the relation between private and public sector in in in, in, in space so of course there will be many opportunities belong to this crisis but do not forget that the the, 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 the value chain of the space sector is uh, typically concentrated in uh, small and medium enterprises that more often that often are weak not only in terms of organization but also in terms of finance. And this is a particular moment in which they are, they, they are really struggling. So uh, what to say, it's important to reduce all the barriers uh, to, uh, to, to the entrepreneurship, but it's also important to favor the cooperation uh, between uh, university and business collaboration. And maybe you are giving another example today with your initiative. So and it's also important uh, to promote network developments. We have uh, followed this path during these years. In 15 years, we have created a space ecosystem resilient and uh, perform, that uh, perform in a good way here in Apulia. We have done it be believing that the cooperation is the only way uh, to face the competition, uh, cooperation that uh, is not only between uh, our actors, but is in uh, uh, idea of a great network that comes uh, from here and reach also Australia, as you have uh, already demonstrated uh, with your initiative in uh, Australia, belonging to Angel Investment uh, Investment Group. So we think that we have created the condition to change the specialization of our uh, space uh, sector or aerospace sector in Apulia, trying to. Uh, pay attention to the technologies that 15 years ago seems to be uh, more, more, uh, <clears throat> more valuable for the futures. So nowadays we have think about technologies, we have technologies, but we have also, as I told you, an ecosystem made by uh, public and private uh, uh, labs, made by university, more investment in uh, research and infrastructure, high secondary school and uh, post diploma school that uh, uh, create new competencies for enterprises uh, and also big infrastructure as a uh, Brutalia Airport, which is a national test bed for uh, unmanned uh, aerial uh, experimentation, and uh, the, the, which is also the first Italian spaceport, 
the Prone Living Lab in Bar, in which we are uh, uh, testing uh, urban air mobility solution. So, uh, uh, um, a resilient in terms uh, of uh, um, uh, trust and, uh, um, and uh, uh, cooperation system here in Apulia that is ready to create uh, uh, any possible bridge with uh, any part of the world that uh, is uh, concentrated to, to overwhelm this uh, critical period for our society, but uh, is also convinced that uh, cooperation does not work only during the crisis, but it should be a trademark of our uh, activity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, uh, we see now the perspective from Tuscany. Uh, Roberto Pini from CNR is uh, in the scientific committee of the Tuscan district. Please, Roberto. So thank you, Marco. Good morning, everybody. And uh, I would like to send you my warmest greeting from Florence, Italy. And thank you for your kind invitation to this workshop. And uh, I am a scientist, as you said, from the National Research Council of Italy, here representing the scientific committee of the Tuscan Aerospace District, which I would like to present to you in a, in a few minutes. Um, coming to the topic of the workshop, I can start saying that the structure of the Tuscan Aerospace District uh, reflects the national one in which uh, there, there are large industries uh, maintaining a, strate a strategic role uh, on key technologies, which in the case of Tuscany are mainly photonics, optoelectronics, and technologies for satellite propulsion, of electric and chemical species, characterized by the production of instruments and components in uh, very limited numbers, but at very high cost per item. Uh, alongside the large industry, there are also a number of small and medium-sized industries that uh, is uh, underlined by Giuseppe Acerno and uh, that deal with the design and development of components that can be put in the value chain. In the last report of the National Aerospace uh, Cluster of Italy, Tuscany expresses greater strength in the space sector rather than in the avionic uh, sector, in particular uh, with regard to the satellite technologies and, and application to Earth observation and space exploration. Tuscany ranks, I, I should say, more or less in the fourth place compared to the other Italian regions in terms of projects and turnover and the production is settled in, uh, um, in uh, main areas of the region, namely the pro provinces of uh, Florence, Pisa, and Livorno. Uh, in numbers, we have uh, six large companies, including Leonard Company and CTEL, which represent the main ones for development of satellite platform and space instruments. Uh, there are about 30 uh, SMEs dedicated to aerospace technologies, and the number of employees was uh, uh, around 2,500 and the turnover around uh, 350 million euros just evaluated before the COVID pandemic. Worth mentioning are also the main stakeholders from the academia and research centers, inclu including the three uh, main public university in Tuscany and the private university Scuola Sant'Anna, specialized in sensors and silicon integrated photonics. Uh, for instance, of the National Research Council uh, specialized in ICT in, in PISA and optics and photonics in Florence, including the one I belong. And in this scenario, the government of Tuscany can, can uh, um, play a strategic role by promoting a program for the space sector, aggregating small and large companies together with a research center in a value chain. And while it is clear that the regional funding could not cover the cost of uh, a proper space mission, and this is not actually its purpose. On the other hand, it can bear the cost of preliminary mission studies, demonstrators on new technologies and services, which can nominate Tuscan industries for participation in national and international space programs. So uh, I, I may say that one of the first, one of the main roadmap for space technology in, in, in Tuscany is represented by <clears throat> the development of optoelectronics instruments for satellites and avionic use like cameras, spectrometers with wide spectral band with high spectral resolution, as well as compact and reduced weight sensor for uh, mini satellites and drones. I could, I could mention many instruments and missions carried out by various international partnerships, including Tuscan companies, 
just an example is the platinum mission uh, where uh, CETEL is developing for the Italian Space Agency a, a multi parties mini-satellite plat platform which has to be compliant with the Italian Vega launcher with electrical propulsion developed in Tuscany in Pisa in collaboration with uh, Thales Salena Space, Leonardo and Airbus, it, Airbus Italia. I would like to conclude my speech uh, by mentioning the SMART project, which means Advanced Miniaturized Spectrometer for technological research of the Tuscan space uh, cluster, recently funded by a tender of the Tuscan region with the cost of about 4 million to develop an hyperspectral payload for mini satellite platform. Alongside the technical aspect, it is very interesting to note that in this, stage, in this case, the Tuscan cluster was able to create an all Tuscan partnership that well represent the regional supply chain. Uh, from large industries like uh, CETEL and Leonardo to research centers like the National Research Council I belong. In my opinion, this uh, uh, represents a good example of the important role of regional government to support the initi initial stages of uh, technological innovation of local industries in order to promote them towards a wider national and international collaboration. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Roberto, and uh, I'm really excited to leave the floor to the president of the Italian Space Agency, Giorgio Saccoccia, for the Italian big picture. Please, Giorgio, the floor is yours. Thank you, Marco, and uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, everybody, and the friends in Australia. Uh, well, first of all, thanks for uh, Cita and for organizing this. Uh, important get together which I think is, uh, is extremely useful. Uh, I will, uh, in order to, to give my regards to all the participants that, that, I, that I see connected today, I will use the opportunity to, uh, to recall the fantastic memories I have of my trip in Australia last year, last February. The official trip that the agency, the United States Agency, made to Australia to celebrate a number of things that we recall. And I'd like to start first, first of all, um, reminding uh, the incredible work which was done, of course, by uh, Ambassador Tardioli and her team to prepare for our visit. Ambassador Tardioli at the time, if I recall well, had just arrived to Australia and she was already uh, feeling and perceiving the incredible enthusiasm that in the space sector the country is uh, is going through since i think since already a few years and uh, she managed really extremely well to to transfer this to, to to myself and my delegation in order to use at best the days we spent in the uh, to, to to cover the the, the um, opportunities of collaboration between the two countries so thanks again, Ambassador Dern. I'm sure that in this uh, period you have uh, an opportunity also to um, to see even more uh, uh, what what Australia uh, does and wants to do in, in the space field. And then, of course, uh, the fantastic hospitality that uh, uh, South Australia offered to us, uh, starting from uh, from uh, Honorable Sir Marshall, who was a really fantastic guest. Sorry, host, and uh, he immediately uh, gave us the, the, the impression of missing uh, uh, Italy uh, because I think he was just uh, back from uh, from the opportunity of visiting Italy a few months before. And uh, unfortunately, I've had the COVID in between. But uh, first, the invitation to you, uh, Honorable Marshall, is 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 uh, always there to come and have the opportunity to meet our government, and I'm sure we'll talk about that in a moment to uh, strengthen even more the, the opportunities of collaboration within the two countries. And that opportunity, by the way, uh, I was uh, so, uh, so lucky to be offered the opportunity to give a keynote speech in the uh, Australian State Forum in front of the Prime Minister Morrison. And uh, I think it was really an honor because it was the opportunity to, to express the willingness of collaboration between our two countries in the, in the space field. And then, of course, the agency. The agency at the time, uh, Enrico was not yet there, but I, I met Enrico before in his, in his previous life. 
and um, but uh, the hospitality offered by Megan Clark and Anthony Murphy and, and their team was really incredible and it was also a beautiful opportunity the fact of being there for the formal inauguration of the agency not uh, for team and uh, again I, I saw this as really a symbolic moment to um, to to express uh, the opportunities of uh, future collaboration between our two agencies and our two countries. Um, and then we move to industry. To industry and the all uh, uh, communities operating in the space field in, 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 in Australia and Italy. And this, I think, was at least from my point of view, was the most uh, uh, astonishing and, 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 uh, and, uh, and, uh, her warming uh, impression. What I could see was an incredibly lively uh, industrial scientific community operating in the field and with a very large uh, Italian uh, footprint. We really uh, could, could see uh, how, how important is the Italian presence in Australia, which is of course represented by the, by the subsidiaries of Italian companies, and we'll talk about that in a second. But also by people that live in Australia, they were formed there at, uh, at universities and decided to stay there, or simply moving from Europe, from Italy, decided to create their, their own opportunities there. Of course, I cannot, can't avoid to, to make reference, for example, to the founder and CEO of Lee, who I had the pleasure uh, to be. Um, I mean, she was working uh, when I was at ESA in my team as a young graduate. And then she moved to Australia and she created an incredible opportunity which represents very well the, the atmosphere in Australia in the space field. And then, of course, I think to represent at best the, the Italian community there, I think uh, our friend Nicola Sassanelli is really the one who can uh, me, uh, best represent how familiar is also the atmosphere of, of, of activities over there in Australia in the space field. And then uh, I, I, I think I, I can't avoid to, to, to make a reference also to the uh, to Andy Thomas, who, had, who was so kind uh, to uh, take me on, on, on a helicopter trip to see the devastation, of course, of the of the, of the, of the fires over the Kangaroo Island. And I think it was really an incredible opportunity as an operator in the field of space to see. With my with my eyes, what space can do to support the uh, situation of crisis, and what we can do for sure uh, from Italy, making available or, or finding way to offer our experience in Earth observation to support uh, and prevent a situation like the one that devastated Australia one year ago. So um, with this. A symbolic memories. I think I've uh, I've embraced all the all the all the all the ideal and and practical opportunities for, for collaboration in the future. In Italy, space is really high in the agenda of the government. Space is seen as a, an instrument of growth and recovery after the pandemic. <clears throat> it's an instrument of international diplomacy and industrial promotion. Um, we have uh, we are investing important uh, financial resources in, uh, in the space field um, just to recall a few of them uh, we contribute uh, for more than 600 million euros per year to the european space agency activities we have a third count in europe uh, we uh, have a similar level of investment at national level for national bilateral multilateral missions and activities very recently, as part of the recovery fund, you know, it's an important European Union frame of uh, uh, funding to accelerate the recovery from, uh, from the COVID-19 crisis, uh, Italy has identified the space sector as one of the, uh, of the sectors with the highest potential of acceleration of recovery and growth for the future. So for this reason, we have at the moment a proposal in place which amounts for 2.3 billion euros of, uh, of uh, activities and missions to be performed in the framework of 2026. 
So once more, space is seen as something that is really representing uh, an instrument for economic growth and, and, and acceleration of recovery after the crisis. Uh, I think in this, from this point of view, <clears throat> we are quite similar to what Australia is trying to do using space as an instrument in this direction. Uh, also, from the point of view of the, of the <clears throat> institution and governmental support, space is, uh, has been recognized already uh, a few years ago as something that deserves the highest level of attention to the point that in 2018, space law was uh, um, uh, Emanated that has created the governance uh, such a way that uh, a space report directly to the prime minister, uh, who normally usually delegates to an undersecretary of state the coordination of an interministerial committee formed by 12 ministries plus the conference of the region to overlook and give political guidance and, and direction to state activities, which are then, of course, implemented to the to the, uh, the, the institution and, and, and the and industrial channels uh, in, under the coordination of the Italian space agency. In this respect, the recent, the recent change of government um, has, as a result, and now the under secretary in charge of space activities, Honorable Tabacci, and I'm giving and transferring you this regards, and I'm sure uh, General De Leverano will do it in a second after me. So, once more, space is really uh, consider an important uh, um, sector uh, for, for, for the future of Italy and an important instrument for our collaboration with partners all around the world. In, in view of our experience, we operate in every space sector of applications. And in, in this respect, we are sure that in addition to the already established areas of, a, of a collaborations with Australia, as we recall by Enrico Palermo, or uh, I mentioned Earth, uh, Earth Observation, we recall the opportunities of uh, working together first on the International Space Station to a symbolic uh, gesture of offering a failed opportunity that uh, I, I, I could uh, formalize one year ago when I do my visit, but in the future, possibly collaborating under the Artemis program, which is something that we both sign at the same time, the Artemis Accord. Uh, Making best use of good industrial footprints we have there in Australia with uh, companies like, of course, Tita, CJS, Avio, Leonardo, Taiba, and other opportunities of collaboration to um, representatives of other, other companies. Our important presence in, 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 in the different universities. We really have a, a very wide set of opportunities that I'm sure we can materialize. With a with a strengthening our our exchanges first, and then and then uh, as soon as possible materializing I hope uh, some sort of activities uh, involving our our companies. I like to finish. Oh, I can talk uh, much more about uh, the, the the ideas of collaboration with your with our the countries, but I'm going I'm sure too long. I like to uh, conclude just recalling that uh, this year. Uh, Italy as the presidency of the G20, and uh, we uh, have decided to have space in the agenda, of, uh, somehow in the agenda of the, of the G20 as well, in such a way that we have organized for the 20th of September Space Economy Leader Forum. I think uh, we should have just received my letter of invitation, if not, you said it in a few days, signing a few days ago, together with the other. Um, 20, uh, 20 head of agencies, we intend to convey uh, to, to meet here in Rome in a week which will be fully dedicated to space. We will talk about space from the point of view of the G20 agenda, and we will then, there will be a number of other initiatives organized outside of the G20 in, uh, uh, promoting exchanges at the industrial level. One of those will take place also in, in, in who we are going to say, uh, the police of DTA. So I really see uh, that this year, from the point of view of space, uh, as the year of recovery and uh, where we will put the basis of an important future based on space activities. And of course, it will be extremely nice if this future can be, uh, can, can be consolidated also to a fruitful 
collaboration between uh, uh, Italy and Australia. I think all all the conditions are there. It is up to us to it possible. Thank you. Thank you very much, President Sacoccia. And uh, I am very honored to leave the floor uh, to General Luigi De Leverano, who is the military advisor to the Italian Prime Minister, for his address. General De Leverano, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Molina. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity offered by uh, Cavalier Pertosa to introduce myself uh, in this new charge and in this, for me, new community. I am very glad to participate in this special community, or spatial community. Uh, distinguished guests, uh, good morning, everybody. I am glad he accepted the invitation from the president of CITEL, uh, Madame President Chiara Pertosa, to attend uh, this uh, workshop, uh, albeit remotely, about the role of the Italian and Australian space industries in the economic recovery from this devastating pandemic. Let me first uh, extend my greetings to the Australian and Italian authorities attending to this uh, workshop, uh, and also to the head of the Australian Space Agency, Enrico Palermo, and the president and my friend, of the Italian Space Agency, Giorgio Saccoccio, and all the participants in this meeting. Uh, as the resident appointed military advisor to the Prime Minister, I am also the secretary, maybe, of the Interministerial Committee for Policies and Space and Aerospace Research. Its president, uh, Hon Honorable uh, Deputy uh, Bruno Tabacci, who asked me to convey his uh, special uh, heartfelt greetings and uh, have received the task to coordinate, uh, 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 Deputy Tabacci, to coordinate the policies related to the space uh, and aerospace programs by Prime Minister, Mr. Draghi. Uh, space is a fundamental mental and strategic sector for our country due to the service and the application uh, the national public and the foreign markets can exploit and use it. It can also give a significant boost to scientific research, achieve progress uh, in technology, and then the growth of the national industry uh, over the course of its uh, uh, 60s uh, years history in space, Italy has built a sound and deep competence, uh, has become a leading competitor on the international markets in development of space system and a supplier of institutional and commercial service and application dedicated to the public and private users. This is on the space infrastructure this service and application are used by uh, national institutions like Minister of Defense and, and so on uh, to support the decision about entire sectors such as environment, climate, safety, security, territorial control, infrastructure, cultural heritage, and a specific uh, um, efforts for the Italian government, agriculture, forestry and fishing and civil protection on a general level, they contribute to improve the quality of life as well as the safety and security of the Italian city. It's very important this aspect because my approach to this new world is fundamentally based on safety and security also uh, because uh, coming from this uh, particular minister uh, uh, deputy to the defense of the Italy state. Uh, moreover, they give impetus to scientific research, technological progress, and the space diplomacy initiative. In the near future, it's my intention to complete a tour of the aerospace technology districts 
to have a complete picture of the production capacity of each region, especially my region of, of, of orange, and of the national industrial level of excellence. International collaboration, which we have developed globally within the European institution and through bilateral and multilateral co collaboration, in this case for the study is one of the cornerstones identified by the political leader to develop our national capabilities. Investment in the space sector will be one of the privileged tools for the economic rebound after the two year long COVID crisis. This investment will be uh, guided uh, through different instruments, including the recovery and the resilience facility, national space programs, European multilateral space program like this, the participation in international programs. Uh, within uh, this uh, framework, through cooperation with Australia and other allied and friendly countries, we will be able to emphasize the existing robust connection even more, as well as enhance the quality capabilities and the potential of overall Italian national system. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I wish you all a successful continuous of today's workshop in this way, web air. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you to all, uh, the, to all the speakers uh, who have given us their uh, view and their inspirational uh, thoughts. Uh, and uh, uh, we are running a bit late in the agenda, so we will have uh, one minute uh, sharp break, uh, after which we will leave the floor to Nicola Sassanelli to introduce the panel. So see you in 60 seconds. Thank you very much. Good evening, and uh, from uh, Australian guests, and the good morning uh, from uh, the Italian uh, uh, friends and colleagues. And uh, I agree with Marco. Uh, this first part of uh, this conference is really uh, has a lot of uh, input, and, uh, and uh, in some way is a good inspiration for us. And there are a couple points that maybe we can take later. I, I would like now to, to introduce the eight experts of uh, the panel, uh, four from uh, uh, Italy or with Italian focus and uh, four from Australia. So, but uh, I really would like uh, um, to invite them to present themselves just with uh, a question that uh, um, tell about uh, what is the organization that they represent and the rule in the organization. No more than two minutes because we have 35 minutes in total. I really would like to have a, 
a vibrant panel with the questions uh, that is come not only from me but also from uh, from journalists. So first of all, I, uh, I would like to invite Marzia uh, Migliorelli, the commercial director for CETA, is to say a couple of minutes. Hello, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Marzia Migliorelli. I have been uh, recently appointed as commercial director in CITEL after 15 years uh, in uh, Airbus Italia covering different roles from uh, design leader to program management up to sales and account management. Uh, within CITEL as commercial director, I cover business development, bid management and account management. Uh, CETEL as a company, uh, you, you know it very well, is the largest privately owned company operating in the space sector in Italy and uh, it has been always characterized by a strong focus on cutting edge technology. Um, Bercella Group. Hello, uh, hi everybody. My name is Massimo Bercella. I'm CEO at uh, Bercella. We are a, a company that uh, designs and manufactures composite structures. Um, we started working for the space industry in 2016 and uh, reached now what we can consider a leading position in the Italian market for space structures. Uh, we started working with CTL on the manufacturing of the um, structures for the Platino satellite, which is a, a project that is currently going on. And uh, we continue growing in the, in the field of, uh, of uh, space structures, mainly for satellites, bodies and solar arrays. Thank you, thank you very much, Massimo and uh, Fabio. Fabio Nichele, CEO of Tyvac, I think, Tyvac Italy. Thank you, yes, uh, Tyvac International. Thank you, thank you very much for inviting us, inviting me today. Um, thank you for the introduction, Nicola. My name is Fabio Nichele. I'm a CEO of Tyvac International, uh, he, and our organization is at the European headquarter of the Terran Orbital Group, uh, a pioneer uh, corporation in the miniaturization of space technologies, uh, delivering uh, responsive space solutions. We, 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 sh we specialize in spacecraft development, launch services, orbit operations, and we deliver small satellites for, for uh, critical missions across a variety of applications, LEO, GEO, and beyond uh, uh, Earth orbit. As a CEO, uh, recently appointed, I lead the, the TIVAC uh, International Developing Strategy, uh, executing the business operations, financial control, I'm also responsible for uh, the overall operations of the company. Thank you. Thank you, Fabio. Uh, Professor Francesco Copertino, I'm very uh, quite emotional because this is my university. So, <laughs> uh, Professor Copertino, please, is your floor. Thank you, thank you, Nicola. Thank you for the invitation. I'm Francesco Copertino. I'm director of Politecnico di Bari. Politecnico di Bari is one of the three Italian technical universities, together with uh, the other two located in Turin and in Milan. We offer courses uh, in engineering, architecture, and industrial design. The overall number of our students is roughly 11,000. Uh, if we put together lecturers, professors, researchers, and technical staff, we have about uh, 1,000 as a number of uh, overall, uh, overall staff. Uh, among uh, our courses, uh, we also have a, a bachelor, a master of science degree, and a PhD program in aerospace. Uh, all of them uh, are uh, developed in cooperation with our, other Aupulian uh, universities. Uh, a couple of words, if I have time, uh, reg regarding our research. We, we, we may divide our research in aerospace into three areas. Um, that could be infrastructures and hardware. Uh, so I'm talking about uh, electronic components, uh, um, innovative payloads, uh, studies on advanced, advanced material properties. Uh, on the other side, we have uh, numerical models and software. 
embedded system, uh, cybersecurity and data analysis uh, to make some example. And then uh, the third area is the business strategy for the space. So space technology scouting and assessment, a new business model to follow the evolution of the aerospace sector. Thank you. Thank you, Francesco. Oh, now we can uh, move to the Australian team. Mark Ramsey, General Manager, CTEL Australia. Thanks, Nicola. Yes, as you say, Mark Ramsey, General Manager of CTEL Australia. And I guess I'm an engineer by background and by heart, but uh, now very pleased to be leading CTEL in Australia. Um, CTEL in Australia at the moment has a, a small but growing team in, in satellite and spacecraft engineering. Um, and my main responsibility is really to grow our team engineering capability technology footprint um, here at Lot 14 in South Australia, very close to our friends, um, Matt Tetlow from Innovore and the space agencies just up the street from where we are. Thanks. Thank you, Mark. Yes, we are everybody in Lot 14. And Matt, Matt Tetlow, uh, CEO Innovore. Thanks, Nicola. Yes, um, my name is Matt Tetlow. I'm the founder and CEO of Innovore Technologies. Uh, we're a small satellite um, manufacturing company. We design and build spacecraft for um, other people's missions. So we have a, a number of uh, Australian government customers for which we're building spacecraft. And we essentially design and build all the subsystems ourselves uh, here in South Australia. And we also have two applications that we focus on, which is space domain awareness or space traffic management, and then Earth observation. So we're looking to, I guess, to expand and grow into um, bigger spacecraft and more missions. And why these, that's why these sorts of panels are, are really uh, of great interest to us. Thank you, Nicola. Thanks, Matt. Uh, Rajat, Rajat Kulusresta from uh, uh, Space Machine Company, CEO. Thanks, Nicola. Um, so my name is Rajat Kultreshta. I'm the CEO and co-founder for Space Machines Company. We're an Australian in-space logistics startup uh, based in Adelaide and Sydney, um, building in-space transportation, servicing and exploration as a service mission capability to our customers. As part of that, we're building orbital transport vehicles that will deliver spacecraft from la launch vehicle drop-off locations to low Earth orbit, medium Earth orbit, geosynchronous and higher. Um, and these spacecrafts will support diversity of mission profiles, constellation deployments, space situational awareness, um, servicing, um, and deep space exploration. Our first mission will fly next year in 2022 with multiple customers um, to prove the capability in low Earth orbit with subsequent flights to higher orbits. So thanks for having me, Nicola. Oh, thank you to you and Raja to be here, part of us. Um, Professor Michele Trenti, my friend Michele from University of Melbourne. Hi, good morning, good evening, everyone. My name is Michele Trenti. I'm a professor in the School of Physics at the University of Melbourne and the director of the Melbourne Space Laboratory. My background is in astrophysics. I'm a user of uh, space telescopes, in particular the Hubble Space Telescope. And uh, in the Melbourne Space Laboratory, we are building uh, the Spirit uh, nanosatellites uh, in uh, collaboration with our industry partners, uh, particular here uh, with uh, CTEL Australia and with Innovor Technologies, but also with other uh, Australian uh, companies uh, with Nova Systems uh, and with Neumann Space. And uh, we are cooperating for the Spirit Satellite uh, with uh, Italy and uh, will be hosting, as uh, Enrico Palermo has mentioned, uh, an instrument uh, kindly provided by the Italian Space Agency. So Spirit will both promote the growth of the Australian uh, industry in uh, the space sector, but also enable scientific cooperation in the area of uh, high energy astrophysics. So fantastic. In uh, less than uh, five, six minutes, we introduce all our same. Let's start to talk, or let's, the first question, you know, two important companies, CTIL and Bercella, that they work together in, uh, in, uh, in Platino, and uh, Platino is very complex, uh, small satellites. And uh, in this particular moment that uh, we talk about, uh, you know, COVID, economic recovery, I just, uh, you know, a question for you, uh, Marzia and Massimo. How, you know, um, the R&D, the research and development is relevant 
for your company in this particular moment. There was some, uh, um, you know, in the first uh, uh, panel, we talk about R&D as sort of a panacea uh, for this recovery. What do you think? Well, um, we at CITAL, we, we build our commercial proposition around four pillars. Small satellite from 50 to 350 kilograms, you cited Platino, that is probably the most famous one, together with Tazi, Leonardo and Airbus, and thanks to the support of the Italian Space Agency. Electric propulsion, this is a unique competence in Italy. Onboard equipment, with particular focus on control electronics and power management, and most recently, SATCOM mobile terminal for telecom application. So you can easily imagine how R&D for this company has been always a key driver. The only way to keep high competitivity and to remain at the forefront of the space industry. Uh, and this is true also in this economic recovery phase. We are not decreasing the level of R&D. We are keep pushing. But the internal effort today, we recognize it is not enough. The role of institution in this case, it is more and more important. Uh, and we need to be supported, the industrial effort to be supported to preserve the Italian competitivity worldwide and to preserve the old investment and the new ones that is going to become. CITAL is proud during the year to have built strong and trusted relationship with uh, the highest Italian and European institution. I want to thank the Italian Space Agency and uh, the Office of the Military Advisor to the Prime Minister that uh, we are today for their support, for their passion, for the competence that they put in the work. Now, what is happening today is indeed incredibly challenging because in this post-COVID pandemic, we need also to face the competition of new and old space tech giants that keep moving and moving very fast without rest. So with respect to the past, the new paradigm of the space economy, of the space economy requires us to put in place new approaches to the R&D too. And we support the idea of the institution to create a more balanced risk in investment. That is an active role of uh, European institution, of Italian institution in creating a market, a market need for tomorrow a sustain, to sustain the investment by a reliable anchor tenancy to guarantee the return of the investment. I just conclude very briefly by saying that on top of this, that is a mid-long term strategy and overview, we cannot forget today the difficulty that we have in the post-pandemic. We have almost 18 months of pandemic behind us. 18 months in which despite all the effort, the expectations of the company have been rarely confirmed. So to allow the recovery phase to start, really to start, I believe it is important also to recognize who is really experiencing difficulty within the landscape and to put in place concrete action related to this. Thank you, Marcia. So I, I assume that is the rule of the government uh, will play an important role. That is, uh, is true for both countries. Uh, Massimo. Yeah, I connect uh, and I agree totally with uh, Marzia. I believe that R&D is absolutely cru crucial and uh, we'll see it better in the coming months. We expect uh, both the EU and the Italian agencies to invest a lot in bringing companies together to form large R&D alliance on large R&D topics. Um, as uh, Ambassador Tardioli said earlier this morning, uh, the Italian space industry is based on more than 200 uh, small and medium enterprises. And so I believe that uh, what the Italian space agency in particular is doing very well is trying to connect companies because of course size is uh, more and more important every day and we are now trying to uh, participate in a, in a worldwide industry and in this new space race. So it will be uh, very important to set up cornerstones like the one we, uh, we set with CETEL on the Platinum project for uh, connecting small SMEs to be ahead of the competition. For us, the main target will be to develop newer structures that will, um, will allow um, 
lighter satellites and of course cost, uh, the cost drivers will be very important so it will be uh, a challenge to develop lighter and, uh, and cheaper uh, structures for our customers. Uh, thank you, Massimo. And I think that uh, you open uh, uh, two important questions that uh, I really would like to ask to uh, Professor Copertino, Professor Trenti from the university. So there are two important aspects because Australia is not uh, is not different from Italy in terms of we can say that 80, 90 percent. I can say 90 percent or probably more of the um, private organization are SMAE. So, um, and that is a similar situation to Italy. So the role of the university are strategics are very important. And that is uh, in two ways. One, prepare the workforce. So have um, dedicated coursework, uh, including master and honors, uh, uh, to um, skill, uh, you know, the, the workplace uh, workforce of tomorrow. But also, as we talk about SME, you need to be close to the research organization in order to share some important uh, research project. Uh, Professor Copertino. Yes, um, I believe that the, the, the recovery phase that we are going to approach together with an already existing evolution of uh, the aerospace sector that has begun well before the pandemic, will contribute to open the aerospace te sector to both te new technologies, but also new companies and uh, institutions that were not spe specialized, already specialized in the aerospace sector. In uh, such a contest, uh, I, I believe that, uh, as you said, um, the uh, edu um, higher education uh, will, will not only uh, have to train skilled scientists, but uh, all, has also to play a role in connecting companies and institutions, giving them opportunity to, to collaborate, but also to rescale the personnel to adapt them to helping them to adapt to the continuously changing scenario. Uh, in this contest, uh, we started uh, a little bit more than one year ago. The second Italian uh, ISA lab at Politecnico di Bari. We have participated uh, many initiatives uh, to bring the Apulian small and medium enterprises uh, uh, closer to the aerospace. Uh, we, uh, last year, we also started uh, a new PhD program, as I said before, in the aerospace science and engineering. Um, within this contest, uh, uh, we have, have launched a series of webinars uh, entitled uh, Rediscovering the Space. We are giving about uh, 14 events uh, that allowed us to touch topics uh, ranging from uh, very specific uh, uh, research project like uh, re-entry re -entry thermofluid dynamics, but also touching uh, uh, topics like uh, new business models for the space economy. Uh, the seminars uh, have been uh, open also outside the, the PhD, uh, they are available into our YouTube channel, and uh, they really allows us to uh, measure the interest of uh, the local and national players toward uh, this area and uh, toward the possibility of having uh, an interaction with academia to enter the uh, aerospace uh, sector. Uh, of course, uh, all the other initiatives like uh, col collaboration in Bachelor and Master of Science are really important. Um, collaboration between universities and, uh, and, and companies because we have to, to, to short the gap between uh, academic um, uh, the, uh, training and then what is the real need for the companies in terms of uh, knowledge skills that uh, uh, is needed to speed up uh, the um, the exploiting of uh, the, the new opportunities that we will have with the restart phase of the pandemic. Thank you, Francesco. I think that uh, uh, when we talk about 
collaboration in particular, uh, university or research organization and private company, the spirit satellites uh, that uh, lead by uh, um, Michele, uh, Professor Trenti, is a fantastic example. Uh, Michele, could, could you give us some, uh, you know, something more uh, about these satellites and uh, in which way uh, you work well with CTEL, uh, with Innovo, yeah. and uh, I think with Human Space too. Yeah, yeah, no, f thank you, uh, Nicole. I think uh, uh, the Spirit is really a good example to show how one can couple frontier research and development uh, driven by pursuit of big answers uh, to science uh, questions uh, with uh, industry uh, uh, collaboration. So SPIRIT stands for uh, uh, Space Industry Responsive Intelligent Thermal Satellite. And these are uh, representing uh, the aim of the project uh, to grow capabilities uh, in the Australian space industry to make nanosatellites more powerful and capable of carrying out uh, uh, um, <clears throat> tasks, uh, capabilities uh, that uh, were traditionally restricted to satellites of greater volume, mass, uh, and power. But uh, at the same time, in uh, reaching these goals, uh, we are aiming to uh, pursue scientific investigations uh, through cooperation with the Italian space agency. So Spirit, uh, May, a made in Australian spacecraft uh, will be hosting uh, an advanced miniaturized uh, X and gamma ray telescope uh, built and developed uh, in uh, uh, Italy with funding from the Italian Space Agency. And so we'll aim to answer some of big questions of modern astrophysics uh, around uh, high energy universe. And so that really shows how one uh, can combine the uh, two key aspects of research in uh, uh, the university sector, fundamental research and applied research for the benefit of both uh, 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 areas. And the, the sum of the, uh, the two is, uh, is greater than individual components. And so really the cooperation with industry is beneficial for the project. I think it has, uh, it has shown how to develop projects in our own lab on a quicker pace rather than generally the longer timescales that are uh, associated to fundamental uh, research. And at the same time, we've been able to bring in expertise and collaborate with the emerging uh, Australian uh, industry to to uh, give uh, an international link uh, to our collaborators uh, overseas, which is proving very beneficial for the whole project. Uh. Th thank you, Michele. And I think there is one more aspect that uh, could be uh, raised today is also the work experience that Spirit, you know, included. Yes. And, uh, you know, the Andy Thomas and Space Foundation is a, uh, um, is happy to be involved in this exercise, you know, provide also some resource in, in uh, organize uh, for young, uh, uh, know, postgraduate, six, you know, weeks uh, in, uh, in the three company, yeah. I think is, is uh, fantastic. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, the workforce uh, training that you, you mentioned at the beginning in, is another key aspect of uh, where uh, there can be very fruitful cooperation between uh, academia, industry, and uh, funding organizations such as the, the uh, Australian Space Agency and the Andy Thomas Space Foundation. I think uh, we're, with uh, workforce training, we are forming critical thinkers, the innovators and leaders of tomorrow with an industry-focused internship program. We're connecting our brightest students to uh, industry. We're giving them uh, hands-on experience. Uh, uh, we're uh, growing their network of uh, potential uh, employers. And uh, we're uh, also uh, in uh, the project itself getting an incredible amount of enthusiasm and energy by our young uh, uh, members of the team 
who are really very dedicated and often come up with innovative uh, uh, solutions because they they don't come with all the background uh, knowledge uh, in uh, uh, in the space sector and they can be really really innovators which i think is a, is a key theme yep. for uh, the development of nano satellites rather a new way of doing space uh, uh, leaner quicker and uh, more effective and distributed Thank you, uh, uh, Michael. But, um, one more thing uh, before to uh, ask some uh, particular question to uh, two innovative company like uh, Taiba K Innovol is uh, just, uh, uh, we talked this morning, uh, in particular the two ambassadors related to um, uh, bilateral collaboration and uh, the two country that has, uh, they, they have shares uh, sh uh, share common value and also important challenge. One of the uh, opportunity that we have in order to promote this bilateral cooperation is uh, the joint PhD activity. So I really would like uh, um, maybe start to think, uh, um, uh, Francesco and uh, Michele, uh, in which way we can have the, what we call the call to tell. So uh, some uh, PhD, joint PhD by um, University in Italy and University in Australia. And in this case, you know, smart SAT CRC, what the Premier said uh, this morning um, is, uh, you know, the most important res um, research program in the space are, are, um, are able to support, you know, the full uh, uh, scholarship. So this is just one, uh, um, um, one opportunity that is here uh, um, available. But um, we talk about uh, R&D, we talk about um, uh, skill uh, uh, workforce and also um, R&D involvement with the, with, the, with the private company. But there is another important aspect to, um, you know, in order to have a vibrant ecosystem. And that is my question to Fabio and Matt. So how the local supply chain is relevant for the rapid growth of your business? Because the supply chain is another important component in this big puzzle. Um, Fabio. Do you want me to start, Nicola? I think that uh, the, the rapid growth of, of a business like, like ours, like our SMEs, needs to rely on a, a, a different type of supply chain, if you want. Uh, on, we need to rely on multiple and flexible suppliers, um, not only supply, suppliers from the traditional um, aerospace so supply chain, but ever increasing contamination, uh, if you want, from automotive, uh, electronics, electro-optical, uh, radio frequency, materials, uh, why not, and also uh, software, including artificial intelligence-driven application um, developers that we, we found uh, everywhere in the world and in other uh, techno high technology sector uh, today. Um, our supply chain uh, dynamically change uh, based on the technology technology evolution. We have uh, technology evolution cycles that are in the order of one year or two years uh, after uh, after which the technology might become obsolete, like in the in the semiconductor electronics uh, industry we see today. So we need suppliers that are not only reliable but also fast. Uh, our Assembly integration and verification processes today are measured in, in, in a matter of days and weeks, uh, not more in months. And uh, our satellites are as much as low cost and high performance driven. And so the procurement processes uh, should be as well. It is not a difficulty to find a local supply chain that responds to to the needs uh, of, of a company like a uh, tech company like ours. What is difficult is to find a shift, if you want, of mentality from these uh, local industries that are used to work for traditional large space companies and, uh, and, and are used to a burden of engineering and certification standard compliance, if you want, which we do not require necessarily for all the applications that we have. 
So uh, a first solution will, will be probably a simply a different uh, uh, risk posture with respect to the uh, space uh, industry. And the last but not least, uh, I, I would like to mention the key role of the academia and the university and research centers that we, we, we have uh, heard um, uh, from uh, Professor Trenti and, uh, and uh, Professor Cupertino. Uh, they are not supply chain, however, uh, they play a critical role in, in the base research for a company like ours with, the, uh, with our business. They are considered a fundamental right arm, carrying on the research and development from a technical, scientific, and also market-driven and business-driven Point of view. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Fabio and uh, Matt. Uh, I think it's fantastic this concept of contamination because also in our ecosystem, you know, a lot of expertise and capabilities come from defense and automotive. And then there are some industry that now is, is playing important role uh, with you. Uh, in the space sector, what do you think? Yeah, so I mean, uh, we um, obviously are, are a much younger space nation than, than Italy. And I guess you talk about contamination, it's kind of the other way around that space is sort of contaminating defense and automotive in, in Australia more so than the other way around. So we kind of are, are, are in a situation where we, you know, there are, there are many suppliers that do the sort of things that we're looking for, but it's just about being able to get hold of the right ones or the ones that have the drive to change what they're doing to meet, you know, a space um, application, essentially. So we've kind of gone down, uh, down that path and we've kind of engaged with a lot of local manufacturers and all of our electronics and mechanical parts are built uh, in, in Australia. And essentially that's come, up, come from us trying out a number of different suppliers and then finding the ones that have really got the appetite and the, the, the drive, I guess, to sort of raise their standards up to kind of meet some of the more stringent requirements of space. In saying that, that, that's such an important part of the, the ecosystem is the supply chain. Like I know, well, Fabio in particular mentioned about, you know, control of the supply chain, being able to get what you need when you need it and that sort of thing. So, so the supply chain is really important. But I think there's an opportunity here to, to kind of, you know, do a little bit of, of, of both. You know, I think we want, to, we want to be able to grow the supply chain. We want to be able to grow our technology locally. But we also want to be able to partner with, um, you know, space-faring nations to sort of bring technology together and get the best for, for both of us. And I guess the end goal, I think, of what Australia needs to, to be at is to have these sort of balanced partnerships where partners, are, you know, there's a reasonable amount of, of scope for, for, for everybody kind of thing. Now, that comes from two things. First of all, we know that Italy is investing large amounts of money into the, uh, into the Italian uh, space industry, and, and Australia is starting to invest more money into the uh, um, uh, Australian um, ecosystem. And I guess that's, that's how we will strike that balance. There's going to be a technology aspect where we're not going to just buy everything from one person. We, we want to we'll buy everything from one country. We want to essentially have, you know, shared responsibilities. And that's going to come with shared missions or, or shared um, amounts of investment from, from the various different uh, countries, I think. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Matt. And that is open uh, uh, a question to uh, Raja. You know, <laughs> it seems quite complex, uh, these puzzles. So we need R&D, we need technological transfer. Uh, Matt say we need partnership because it's very important, as well as we need uh, skilled people at the right moment in that, in that particular discipline. Uh, Rajat, how is uh, difficult this for a startup? Because, you know, uh, your company was established you know, uh, one year ago, a couple of years ago, and you have a really important uh, goal in front of you. How this is work all together and in, in which way you are able to manage all of these elements um, to growing and in particular to, uh, to attract new investors in your company? And then they're absolutely right. And I think last uh, year and a half obviously has been very difficult with COVID-19. Um, in the best circumstance, the biggest issue a startup has is capital, access to capital. And I think what COVID-19 has done is sort of made some other problems come to bear. So things like you mentioned, which is access to talent, uh, because there's restricted mobility, 
Um, there's things like um, supply chain disruptions, which have caused uh, major issues in being able to get parts locally, and, and hence also highlighting the need for local supply chain. So I think on one hand, where it's highlighted issues that startup would naturally face because of uh, COVID-19, there is more focus on certain areas. So, you know, multiple speakers talked about the importance of um, STEM and education and getting more graduates through, um, building more partnerships with uh, international companies where there is a way to have um, a cooperative partnership that allows for knowledge transfer faster. Um, so I think on one hand, it's actually um, been a negative, but on the other hand, it's also made, made us more focused uh, around collaboration, around access to university talent, around um, looking to build supply chain locally and focusing on that. So I think for us, it's been a bit of a, uh, a, a, a you know, a mixed um, impact. Um, and so I think, you know, for, for us, the, the fundamentals of the business um, as a startup remain the same. We've got to have a good product. We've got to have customers. Uh, but at the same time, uh, a, a more increased focus on local supply chain, local capability, um, and the ability to access talent. Oh, thank you, uh, Rajat. Um, Mark, uh, yes, you are CETA in Australia, and uh, the environment or the ecosystem around you is a little bit different of the environment ecosystem around CETAL in, uh, in Italy. So you are not just support, you know, the building, develop a small satellite in Italy, but you are involved here in Australia in a sophisticated payload. Design, develop, uh, and uh, in particular, uh, identify uh, good partnership. Could you tell us something more? What is a CETAL Australia in Australia? Thanks, Nicola. Um, I guess I'd start by saying that we're um, so tell in Australia is is aimed to build up a, an Australian presence and an Australian capability to, I guess, complement our strong engineering capabilities in Europe and Italy. Um, and we're currently expanding the team. Um, firstly, what we do for our sort of day to day work at the moment is we do a lot of systems engineering, integration and test work, sort of bringing some of our space experience to help support our partners in Australia. And we're certainly working on the, the SPIRIT project led by uh, Professor Trenti um, and another defence project uh, that we're working on our partners, uh, Innovore Technologies with Matt there. Um, we'll be very pleased in the next week or two to be announcing a new partnership with an Australian university um, around doing some infrared imager payload development um, that's really gonna be focused on um, some Australian national problems such as sort of disaster monitoring. We have a very large country here. And so Australia, if anything, is a textbook example of where space technology can solve um, some, some national issues. Uh, we, we look to both Australia and the, the Asia Pacific region for, for electric propulsion opportunities. Um, and, and we certainly have many discussions and opportunities um, under consideration at the moment with some partners. And I guess finally, um, this year we'll be pleased to host our first interns in, in Citel Australia to, to grow the next generation of workforce and that will be in partnership with the Andy Thomas Foundation and the University of Melbourne. Um, I guess finally in terms of Italy versus Australia, I, I think Australia is, whilst we have a, a quite a long heritage in space in terms of time, we don't have a lot of experience in the domain and so we're a bit of a a new baby of the ecosystem, um, but we've had an incredibly exciting few years in Australia and uh, events like tonight uh, or this morning uh, really, uh, you know, are a testament to the, the excitement and the energy in the sector. Um, I, I think in the next few years, we're really going to start to mature. A lot of the organisations you've heard from today on the call are, are growing at a rapid pace. It's uh, fantastic to hear. And I think there's a lot of lessons we can take from uh, established partners like Italy around, um, you know, how to really drive uh, national policy for the best outcomes, how to grow a, a sustainable industry sector. And I, I think in, finally, I, th I think more than anything for us, um, Satel takes a view of um, partnering for our success. And I think that extends to both our industry and academic collaborators um, here in Australia, but also um, in terms of the bilateral relationship from Australia and Italy. Thank you, 
Uh, Mark, I think that we don't have a lot of time, but let me just have a question for everybody. If you can, just uh, a couple, uh, um, what do you think, a couple sentences, but uh, that will be very useful for us that is involved in the promote the bilateral collaboration. So uh, tonight we talk about two, two important aspects. One is uh, collaboration international collaboration, bilateral collaboration in this case between Australia and Italy. And uh, for the other uh, part is, uh, is a partnership and uh, ecosystem. You know, uh, my, my, my question to all the panelists is um, how the local uh, um, ecosystem is important for grow your company and in which way the bilateral collaboration with the Australian, with Italy, can help in uh, in uh, grow fasting. So uh, let me start with Marzia. So um, yes, we have a short time, so very quickly. Uh, I think that generally speaking, uh, bilateral collaboration as well as uh, the, the, the local collaboration can be seen as a sort of think tank of ideas because we put together people and environment that uh, uh, could be very different. Uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, we could consider, uh, it is important, uh, this from my point of view, we can consider that bilateral collaboration is not only export for, for both the collaborative uh, uh, side, it means uh, bilateral growth also and the opportunity to think uh, uh, as big as possible. Uh, the ambassador this morning uh, just cited this uh, opportunity to, to think big, to think big. Uh, we as CITEL, we are also proud to include in this bilateral collaboration a lot of uh, uh, local environment. We have a very strong relationship with, uh, with our local industry, uh, with the University of Bari, with uh, Bercella that is here today, is just to, to, cite, to include someone that is around the table today. And uh, we are proudly part of the local environment and we would like to export and to have the opportunity to export the, the, the local capability uh, outside Italy and uh, the opportunity to be, for example, in Australia to build up on R&D activities to propose new development, it would be absolutely of interest for us. Oh, thank you, Marcia. Massimo. Well, to be part of an ecosystem means to have a vehicle uh, that can be used to foster growth outside of the national boundaries. I believe uh, bilateral opportunities like this one can be a good uh, example of how two countries, two agencies can help their uh, small and medium enterprises or larger ones even to uh, enlarge their horizons and think more on a, on a global scale to see how an industry can grow and steps up. So uh, I believe that uh, uh, the, the, the growth of companies like ours in such an, uh, an inspiring environment can really benefit from these kind of bilateral opportunities. Well, that is a very important point and uh, uh, let me highlight what the Premier said uh, a couple hours ago is the forum, the next forum is Australian Space Forum uh, um, will be on the 15th of, of November, it could be difficult to, you know, to be to be here physically, but uh, I strongly invite uh, you all uh, to, to connect it virtual because it's, uh, it's quite important to understand better what's happened here in Australia and maybe in the future to be part of the exhibi uh, exhibition area. Uh, Fabio. Well, uh, uh, I believe that first of all, we need to, to answer first, uh, all of us, what we want to achieve uh, in the sense that we, we from the business per perspective, uh, for example, we at Tybac want to develop spacecraft that enable the success or, or, or address the emerging needs of our partners' missions. And uh, today for me and for us, the, the, the needs are very clear and, that, and, the, and can measure in faster and more democratic, if you want to call it like that, or, or another name for cheaper access to space. 
and uh, increasing uh, specific performances uh, and more and more agile uh, platforms uh, designed for multi-missions and multi-objectives. So I think that the uh, being part of, a, of an ecosystem like that and, uh, and uh, fostering the bilateral co collaboration, cooperation, um, can, can be seen in, in uh, multiple ways. First of all, uh, continuous investment in R&D, as Marcia was saying before, uh, despite all the efforts from the private industry, we need trust from the national agency, we need, uh, uh, we need constant support from the institutions. And this allows uh, a rapid development and qualification of technology and continuous innovation and improvement uh, as I said before, small satellite technology cycles today follows uh, the, the semiconductor and ele ele electronics evolution and that two years old piece of technology may be considered already obsolete. So there is a continuous need of, of a seed of investment to keep the rhythm of technology cycles. The second one might be um, the, the explo uh, exploitation of infrastructures. Uh, so small satellite small satellites uh, constellation, for example, need a rapid uh, development um, and inf infrastructure that can support lean and agile assembly integration and verification processes. So modern laboratories and large production lines that, lines that can uh, enable the delivery of tens of units of satellites per year. And, uh, and the third one we already mentioned before, uh, Nicola, is, is a flexible supply chain and the need to rely on a uh, uh, multiple flexible supply chain with dynamically can dynamically change based on the uh, evolution of the technology and evolution of these uh, hundreds of uh, small medium enterprises. Uh, so I believe those there are many factors, but those are uh, three points that uh, uh, can be very important in a in a bilateral cooperation like this. Well, I think it's very important. This uh, and uh, uh, you wrap up so elegant. You know the, the, what we did this afternoon. Three important points: investment in R&D, exploitation of infrastructure, and have uh, an agile, flexible supply chain are very important pillar. Uh, Francesco. Yes, Nicola. Um... I strongly, strongly believe that the collaboration and the exchange of experience are a factor of uh, fundamental importance in the training of researchers, both uh, university researchers and, and researchers working in a private company. Uh, in Italy, uh, we have the Italian government that is pushing towards industrial PhD programs in which the students have to collaborate to projects coming from the needs of one or more companies. Of course, also the collaboration among different university research groups are ex is essential to improve the quality of the research activities, in particular in a field like the aerospace, in which uh, different heterogeneous competencies are necessary to improve technical solutions or imagine new solutions to bring us where we have not been before. I hope that today we, we put a first step I hope that uh, the collaboration uh, with, uh, with Michele Trenti could be could begun today and uh, could uh, allow us to collaborate in the next future. I also believe that uh, the ecosystem is the humus for all the organizations. In a desert, an organization will fail. Will fail. Collaborations create good soil, but then somebody has to cultivate it, it has to water it with resources, both material and uh, immaterial resources. We are ready to do our part of the job to put our glass of water, let's see. Yeah, Francesco, it's very important. And uh, all my life uh, was spent in the bilateral collaboration when I was in, in Canberra as a scientific attaché and also here what we really need is a systematic approach. So you need to identify your, in some way, ecosystem that is not just local, could be international, could be Michele Trenti or could be CETAIL, CETAIL that is in Italy, in Australia. I try to identify some activity that is sustainable for your business, you know, in order to growing and work together I know that resource is not a lot, but for example, Spirits is, uh, it was founded by um, the Australian Space Agency and they strongly involve 
uh, not only CETA, but also the, Australian, the Italian space agency. So we need to, uh, probably what we need is a sort of task force after this uh, um, uh, conference uh, symposium and try to identify some very small, small, small activity, but uh, um, establish a sort of uh, uh, approach that can uh, um, bring a sort of systematic collaboration. Thank you, Francesco. Mark. Thanks, Nicola. Two quick points. Um, I think firstly, the space sector has thrown, shown lots of resilience throughout the pandemic period and the industry as a whole has both grown, but it also delivers an incredible economic return for any, any sort of investment, particularly through private industry. Uh, secondly, we're seeing space become very congested and contested, um, both at a government level and an industry level. And so I think in that environment, partnerships between uh, friendly nations and friendly organisations um, is absolutely critical um, as we go forward. Thank you. That's a very important, you know, uh, the bilateral cooperation with a partner that can share, you know, that we can trust the shared value and the challenge is quite important to grow. Um, Matt. I, I agree with what everybody said, really. I mean, I think the space industry is a very important aspect to, 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 the, to the, the global recovery. Um, and I mean, specifically to our business, I mean, what it means is you, you basically build a workforce. You know, we, we, we're trying to create jobs and we need people to fill these jobs. We want to create a workforce in the research area, in the industry, even the government capability. So, you know, having, an, having an, uh, in, enough people in government who are, you know, know how to procure or build space programs, essentially. And I guess, um, you know, I think, again, this is sort of going back to this balanced side of things. I think we need enough local capability to sustain a sovereign ecosystem, but we also need enough of a partnership to be a useful part of the global space community, basically. Oh, that is another important component of this big puzzle. Rajat. Look, I think for, for in my view, uh, for any bilateral relationship to work, it's got to be uh, grounded in commercial output. And I think for commercial output, you need to identify complementary areas in which you can work together. So I think the collaboration that is directed with an instrument that allows uh, complementary areas between companies, between countries to work together um, that eventually create a commercial output is the way to create long-term sustainability of both ecosystems. So from our point of view, working with a company in Italy in complementary areas, which allows both companies to understand either com new commercial opportunities or enhance and leverage existing opportunities is the way you create a long-term a relationship that actually helps through this period and beyond. That is another important point. In other words, the needs and market in Europe, in, in Australia, uh, could be different. So in the partnership means that you can share your expertise and capabilities also in uh, the needs that is come from Europe and the market that is in Europe. This is another important point is Probably we need one more panel or one more symposium for this. Michele. I think all the previous speakers covered really important points and I in particular agree with what Professor Cupertino highlighted about the importance of collaboration because it's very hard to innovate in isolation. I also think that having a vibrant ecosystem where we have both academia and industry is really the key to be able to approach the government to get resources to further grow and have this ecosystem thrive. Uh, because that's what is giving us a maximum return on the taxpayer investment. You generate innovation, you generate IP, but you also create for the long-term growth of the ecosystem, but you also create jobs and deliver immediate return and benefits for the society. 
uh, I think also this is another important uh, component. Uh, so, uh, uh, Marco, I think that, uh, you know, uh, we take, uh, we have already taken uh, 10 minutes over the time, but I think there was very, very proactive panel. There are a lot of elements is, uh, and uh, of course, uh, I would like to thank you all uh, uh, for your time and also for your contribution. And uh, uh, in uh, uh, send uh, the ball, this ball in uh, your court, Marco, uh, I strongly invite you, don't leave this uh, as it is, but think about what is the next step. Because uh, um, uh, these experts, these uh, stakeholders are really, uh, they could become really uh, important for uh, our bilateral collaboration. Thanks, everybody, and uh, uh, the floor is your Marco. Thank you very much, Nicola. Thank you for sharing this uh, extremely interesting uh, session. We have really food for brain from our panelists that I want to thank uh, again. Uh, what we bring uh, home, uh, this morning, tonight uh, in Australia, is that uh, we have at least uh, two layers of this uh, ecosystem that has been uh, celebrated and recalled more and more times. Uh, we have uh, the layer internal to each uh, country, that is the ecosystem of the companies, uh, of the educational system, so the university and the research centers and the institution. And if uh, this is uh, uh, instrumental to uh, big perspectives, uh, education prepares the resources for the industry, the industry's response to the institution demands, uh, and this is feeding uh, the possibility of having more and more uh, STEM discipline students, and this is creating uh, a circular way to feed uh, the local ecosystem. But then we have understood, and I'm really glad that the two ambassadors have recalled the concept that we are two uh, like-minded countries. We trust each other, which means that the global view of the ecosystem is bringing us one more challenge, that these entities, the university and the educational system, the industry and institutions, both in Italy and in Australia, have uh, the mandate, I could say this way, to collaborate because this is creating more and more opportunities for both countries and uh, definitely for the benefit uh, of all mankind. I'm very glad for you all that have followed this. The streaming will be available uh, offline also to uh, generate uh, a, a white paper I'm, I'm really taking the challenge by Nicola. We need this being not the conclusion of something, but really the beginning of a common path together. Have a nice afternoon in Italy and a great evening in Australia. And we hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all you. for your contribution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. My pleasure. Yeah.